Hello guys, today we are talking about how to bring your blood sugar down with insulin. Now we have other videos about how to bring the blood sugar down fast, etc. But we did not talk about in detail about how to use the slotting scale. We kind of briefly mentioned it. Of course, there are other ways to bring the blood sugar down. You don't have to take insulin always. But in some cases, you feel like you have to because no matter what you do, it's not coming down, then we use the insulin. By the way, I'm Dr. Ahmed Ergin. I'm an endocrinologist and diabetes education specialist. Diabetes is pretty much my life, so I'll tell you what I'm doing in my practice. By no means, this is not a medical advice. This is just to give you an idea of what I do in my practice so you have an idea as well. And make sure you discuss with your doctor as well before you uh, do anything as well. All right, so let's get started. Guys, to summarize, today we are going to talk about is sliding scale insulins and how to bring the blood sugar down. I want to make sure that you watch the entire video because this is a technical video. If you do something wrong, you may hurt yourself. And I, as I said, always run it by your doctor. But jumping to the conclusion and not uh, watching the entire video may give you the wrong impression, okay? So remember, we are using short-acting insulins here to correct your blood sugars, never long-acting or intermediate-acting insulins. Short-acting insulins are Novolog, Hemolog, Apidra, Fias, Admolog, whatever you have it in your hands, these are the short-acting insulins. Even the regular insulin, Sometimes like Novolin R, Himalin R will work. They're slower, uh, not as fast, but they're still considered a rapid acting insulin, uh, but definitely not your long acting insulin such as Tujeo, Lantus, Terceba, Basglar, etc. All right, so what I did here, uh, I also put the numbers in European uh, measurements, so millimoles in red here in this table. I created a table for you guys, a sliding scale table. Some of you are familiar with it. And then these black ones are milligram per deciliter, which is the American measurement. So, guys, don't jump to the screen. Don't try to copy right away because I will tell you a few tricks about how to really use this table effectively. Because it looks a lot of numbers. It looks like a Morse alphabet here. So just, just uh, stay put here for a second. So basically, of course, these are your numbers, right? So you're going to refer to this table. Uh, or something similar to this table uh, with your doctor's uh, approval. But the way it works is how much insulin you are going to take based on your number depends on how much you're currently taking. That's number one. And depends on your insulin resistance as well. So, for example, a patient with type 1 diabetes, for example, or or a very insulin sensitive type two, or some type two diabetics are actually insulin sensitive because of a variety of reasons that I'm not gonna go into detail right now, but they have to take insulin for one or the other reason. But type ones typically are very insulin sensitive, most type ones, not all type ones. But um, for them, if they are taking, for example, anywhere between one and five units for their meals, Typically, that's uh, insulin sensitive. We cost consider it because it's really not a lot of insulin. You know, taking three units for a meal is really not a lot, right? So for them, if their blood sugar is let's say 175, and they fall in here 150 to 200, or let's say their blood sugar is in this case something around uh, 9.5 or something in European measurement millimole, then they can take another one unit if their blood sugar is in that range, that will safely bring them down to a more reasonable rate. So if they are not eating, for example, let's say I'm type one and uh, it's lunchtime, uh, but my blood sugar is 190 and I don't like that number, but I'm not gonna eat. Now, normally I take around three to four units for my meals and I don't like this 190 number, or in this case, let's say 10.8 number, then what I would do is I would take one unit of insulin just to bring the blood sugar down around 50 points. So that one unit will bring you down 50 points. That's why these measurements are, the sliding scale is in 50 unit increments. 
the numbers you see here are designed on the red are designed to bring your blood sugar down by 50 points, 50 milligrams per deciliter, but that's what it is, okay? So you're taking one unit, for example, for that. Now, let's say I am a person uh, who takes not less than five units, but less than 10 units. Let's say I take normally eight units for my meals, okay? Now, in that case, I refer to my second sliding scale, which call it sliding scale number two. So in this case, instead of, let's say the same person, same type one, or it could be type two in this case, a little bit more insulin, but my blood sugar is 190 and I take normally eight units, which is between five and 10 units, okay? Anywhere from between five and 10 units for my typical meals, that's what I take. That's what my insulin resistance is like. For those patients, I tell them to take two units to bring the blood sugar down 50 points. So in this case, if my blood sugar is 190, if I take two units, I expect my blood sugar to come down to 140 without eating. Now, of course, if I'm eating, I can still take my mealtime insulin, which is if the doctor said, hey, take eight units for every meal, and I, I if I'm eating and my blood sugar is still high, then I can still take that eight units, plus I can take extra two units because my blood sugar is high. If my blood sugar was like 100, I would still take my eight units for my meal because if you don't take that, then your blood sugar spikes. So this is one of the number one reason why people's blood sugar go high is because they're scared of insulin their blood sugar is in the normal range, and they think that they don't eat insulin. Well, how about the carbs you're eating in your meal, or even protein can even increase your blood sugar. What is that gonna do? Your blood sugar will go up. So it's not uncommon for people to come and say, doc, my blood sugar goes up anyways, no matter what I do. And basically what they do is, if their blood sugar is 90, and they go eat a half a chicken and salad, and they think that that's gonna be okay, that's not gonna do anything. Well, if you eat a lot of chicken and a lot of salad, that can still increase your blood sugar if you don't take any insulin at all, especially if you're insulin resistant. For people who do not take a regular insulin for their meal time, okay, for them, I will tell you how to come up with these numbers because right now I'm talking about how to come up with these correction numbers, correction insulin, based on what you're taking for the meal time. All right, so same thing for the three units. If I'm taking, we talked about taking between one and five units per meal, then you probably need one unit to correct your blood sugar by, for, by 50 uh, points. If you're taking normally between five and 10 units per meal, then you will need probably two units to correct your blood sugar 50 points. If you are taking anywhere from 10 to 15 units per meal, then you'll probably need three units to bring your blood sugar down 50 points. Now, what I did here, we're talking about the first one, the between 150 and 200, but if your blood sugar is higher, let's say 200 to 250, or between 250, 250 and 300, then as you can see, these numbers are going up. Typically, they are, you know, going up in increments. Uh, let's say for a sliding scale number one, for somebody who's taking less than five units of insulin per meal, every, every 50 points, they are increasing their insulin, one, two, three. For somebody who take, you know, five to 10 units of insulin, they take two units. If they are between 50 and 200, they take 40 units if they are between, um, 250, uh, 200 and 250. So basically what you're doing, you're doubling, right? So you are, if, if I'm supposed to take two units to bring my blood sugar down 50 points, then if I want to bring my blood sugar down hundred points, then I will take four. As simple as that. It's a simple math. Okay. I did this here just to give a little uh, more uh, ease, but uh, this is your baseline numbers. And then once you know how much insulin to take to, blood sugar, to bring your blood sugar down by 50 points, then you can just make the math and say, hey, you know, my blood sugar is right now 230. I want it to be 130. I have an excess of 100. 
and I normally take two units to bring my blood sugar down 50 points, then in this case, I will need 40 units to bring my blood sugar down 100 points. It's just a little math that you need to get used to, uh, to be more precise in your, um, in your decisions. Same thing if somebody is taking between, uh, uh, we said five, uh, one to five, five to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 20 units of insulin. If you're taking 15 to 20 units of insulin per meal, you will need around 40 units of insulin to bring your blood sugar down by 50 points. If you are taking between 15 to 20, uh, uh, I'm sorry, this is about 5, 10, 15, 20. If you're taking 20 to 25 units of insulin per meal, then you will need five units to bring your blood sugar down by 50 points. Now let's talk about how to bring your blood sugar down. If you're not taking insulin at all for your meals, your blood sugar is still high. How do you come up with these numbers? All right, so basically, that is going to change depending on your weight. So um, now here I'm going to use kilograms because there's more universal measurement. So the American watchers in this case will have to uh, turn their pounds into kilograms, okay? But it's not that difficult really, like one kilogram is 2.2 pounds, so you just divide it by 2.2, then you have your kilograms if you are using pounds. So but basically, um, I think it is safe to say that if you are 100 kilograms, let's say, 100 kilograms, okay? Now, most people will need a total daily insulin, you know, less than 0.5 units per kilo. So in this case, somebody with 100, if they take 50 units total, total insulin, if they were supposed to take insulin, that would be their kind of a average insulin. They, of course, they may need more or less, but that's kind of a typical average diabetic takes when they are on insulin around, you know, 0.5 units per. Some people take up to one unit per kilogram, but as I said, 0 0.5 is a good starting point. So you can always adjust that as well, depending on your response. So that means that you need around 50 units if you're 100 kilograms. Now, we have something called 1800 rule, right? So 1800 rules tells you what is your insulin to take to bring your blood sugar down by 50 points, okay? So in this case, let's do the math quick here. If you divide with 1800 by 50, that's gonna give you around 36. So you can round that up to 40. So that means that if you are a 100 kilogram person, one unit of insulin of Hemolog or Novolog will bring you down around uh, 40 points, okay? So the, f the 50 rule typically applies with the sliding scale, but if you are not taking a mealtime insulin, in this case, you need to find how much of one unit of short acting insulin bring your blood sugar down, and then that's your ratio now. You may not be comfortable with that, so I'm gonna let your doctor to decide on this. I'm gonna give you a quick trick here. If you're gonna need one unit to bring your blood sugar down 40 points, you can think that you can start with this because the one unit brings you down on this scale 50 points. So if that doesn't work, you're anywhere between one and two units to bring the blood sugar down 50 points. So you can try the one unit to bring down 50 and if it didn't work enough then you can always try the two units to bring your blood sugar down by 50 points and see how that works and you can choose your sliding scale as i said these are also number of sliding scale you know some people as we talked about need as little as one unit to bring the blood sugar down and some people will need as much as five units to bring the blood sugar down so remember guys though it, it is uh, what we are talking about here is a short acting insulin. So do not use the scale with long acting insulins, never. Uh, long acting insulins, that's why we call them long acting insulin. They are not going to bring your blood sugar down fast. You have to use a short acting insulin such as Novolog, Hemolog, Apidra, Fiasp, uh, Adnolog, whatever you have it. But those are the short acting insulins. Sometimes even regular insulin will work but uh, not the long-acting insulins. I hope that helps you guys, and if it does, please give a thumbs up and uh, share this video with family and friends. We'll see you later.